Soulsborne games have existed since 2009 when Demon's Souls released, and over time more people have been attracted to the series, but why exactly do people like these games? That is what I'll be exploring in today's video. But before we begin, I just want to mention that I'll be live on July 10th and the days after that because I'm going to be doing a um, challenge Elden Ring run. And um, I would like to have a larger community to stream to, so please subscribe. And I upload almost daily, and if I don't upload, I might be streaming. But that's enough for now, and let's get into the video. The reason why people like these games is a process. It was the challenge, and then it was overcoming the challenge. When Dark Souls released, it was really cool if somebody like beat the game, because it was challenging, and it was the first game in the series to become really popular. The game was so challenging that many people just quit the game and never finished it, but for those that stayed, they eventually beat the game, and the feeling of success when beating your first Soulsborne game is incredible. But the reason people even stay to the end is that they've already felt a smaller version of that feeling before. After overcoming a hard boss, players get a sense of accomplishment until they struggle with the next one, where the cycle repeats itself. Another reason why people want to finish the game is to say that they did. Back when Dark Souls came out, you were basically a god if you beat the game in some places. This created a small sense of elitism, and that is unfortunately still present in the community. Um, I recently made a video about that, so check it out if you're interested. Next, players enjoyed the customizability of the combat and your character. You could change your armor into many different types, you could use many different types of damage, and you could level up your character to match what kind of combat that you wanted to use. Like with different types of damage, you could do like bleed damage with like, I, I know a lot of people don't like that when you're using it with like special katanas or whatever, but that's still a viable way to beat the game. And um, this is very appealing as players aren't restricted to one playstyle. Another thing that I want to mention is what occurs in these games. There aren't many characters that help you, and the odds are really stacked against the player. With the feeling of loneliness, some of the games have a very melancholy atmosphere. And with the few characters that the player does meet, they want to see how their story ends, whether it be good or bad. Now I'm going to talk about the largest topic bosses. Bosses are a core function of Soulsborne games. There's such a variety of them ranging from dragons to like forgotten soldiers to spirits to obese people and even to like a tree. The fights are so spectacular and fun to play in especially when playing Bloodborne. In Bloodborne you are constantly on the move and you are constantly fighting your opponent. With the mechanic of getting health back when fighting enemies, the gameplay becomes much more aggressive than it ever was when fighting bosses. Boss fights also changed slightly in Elden Ring, which had so many bosses that it was allowed to use more spectacle bosses that aren't entirely challenging but are meant to look amazing. My final point will be about the juicy, bulging lore. The story behind NPCs, bosses, and why the worlds you visit are the way they are. It's so fascinating. Learning about Bloodborne's healing church and how it infected citizens. Learning about how the Elden Ring was broken and how the pieces were taken. And learning about the disappearance of Dark Souls' gods is so interesting. It makes the player feel like a small part in something massive. Finding these things is extremely satisfying when looking at item descriptions and all that. Or, if you were just looking through a Vadi videos, videos. Overall, there is so much to talk about, and I can't really put it all in just this one video. But this is the basic summary of why millions of people are fans of these games. But before you go, I want to mention one more time that I'm going to be live streaming on YouTube on July 10th, where I will be playing Elden Ring and the challenge run. So if anybody even sees this video, please subscribe so that I can have a community to stream to. And that's about it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.